Hi everyone, I wanted to do a video highlighting just how many crazy quake records we've seen already this year. There's a good chance I'll look at some of these runs in more detail down the line, but because so much has happened in such a short space of time, I thought it would be a nice idea to do a simple overview of all the different improvements. In January alone, we had 13 world records broken on the original id levels, which is pretty much unheard of in the last decade of Quake speedrunning. There have been entire years with fewer new records than in this single month. The runs were all done by three players who each have their own style, and I really love how we're seeing players specialise more and more in certain categories and styles of runs. Stubby is the king of the Nightmare 100% category, relying on incredible patience, wacky tricks, and often just dumb luck dealing with the hordes of unpredictable enemies throughout long demos. Elgu has been focusing mostly on the easy 100% category. These are longer demos as well, but the reduced enemy count and their more consistent behaviour on easy skill means there's more room to focus on smooth movement, perfect aim, and various boosts. It might be fair to call this the category for all-rounder players, and I think Elgu definitely fits that description. Chambers is possibly the best player the game has ever seen when it comes to individual level runs on both easy and nightmare skill. These any percent style demos are all about perfect movement and trick execution, and Chambers has been absolutely on fire lately, grinding out improvements to runs which already seemed optimised. He has also invented a few completely new and unique tricks along the way, resulting in some huge time saves. So, on to the runs, and let's start with Stubby. First, he improved both the Easy and Nightmare 100% runs on E3M6, The Chambers of Torment. This is the last level of Episode 3, and like a couple of other later levels in the game, it doesn't contain any weapons. The level designers assumed that by the time you reach this map, you would have already played through the earlier levels and collected all of the weapons along the way. When you start an individual level speed run, all you have at the beginning is the single shotgun and the axe. So Stubby has to get through the whole level with very limited ammo and resources. On both easy and nightmare skill, he relies heavily on getting the enemies to fight each other, as well as making the most efficient use possible of the quad damage in the map. Stubby then moved on to E3M3, the Tomb of Terror. This map is unique because it actually has two categories of 100% runs. In the standard 100% category, you don't need to kill any of the zombies. This is because of a similar situation to that in the E3M6 run. You need explosives in order to kill the zombies, but there's no grenade or rocket launcher on the map. In a normal playthrough, you should have already picked up the grenade launcher on the previous level. On other maps, you can kill zombies with a quad damage, or even using exploding vor shots, but there aren't any quads or vors on this map either, so for the first few years in Quake's history, people assumed that getting all the kills on this map was impossible. But, as we know, speedrunners like to get creative, and eventually they realised that if you could lure the zombies onto this platform, you could run around in circles to this teleporter and slowly telefrag each zombie. It sounds easier than it is. Zombies are really slow, stupid, and unreliable. I'm sure Stubby could write an essay on all the ways they get stuck or don't cooperate and ruin the runs, and it takes several minutes of waiting around to get them into position if they cooperate at all. It's such a frustrating run that Stubby has been the only person in the past 20 years to submit demos on either skill setting. After countless hours working on this map, he improved the easy skill run by 14 seconds and the nightmare skill run by 32 seconds. Then, just because he couldn't get enough of the map, he also improved the standard nightmare 100% run first by a single second and then by six more. 
even though you can ignore the zombies in this category, you still have to rely on a lot of lucky infighting between the monsters and you have to make a lot of super accurate shots. So this demo is really impressive as well. Next up we have Elgu, who did four amazing easy 100% runs within the space of a few weeks. He started with E2M5, the Wizard's Mance, where he finally broke the one minute barrier. This run has a little bit of everything. It has a cool trick shot through the wall using the lightning gun bug. It has lots of precise and awkward bunnies, perfect aiming, and most of all it has lots and lots of rocket jumps. Next up was E4M3, the Elder God Shrine. I talked at length about the Nightmare 100% run on this map in my first video. Luckily the strange teleporting fiends aren't present on easy skill, so there's no limit to how quickly you can fly through this map. And you really do spend a lot of time flying in this run. Elgu makes very liberal use of quad damage grenade boosts to zip through the long corridors, keeping as much speed as he can while taking out the enemies. I love the ending sequence of this run where this fiend just happens to be in the perfect position for Elgu to do a huge quad boost down this corridor. He then drops a grenade to take out this scrag, gets the last two ogres and exits the level. Elgu also did the easy 100% on E2M2. This was a special run because it was the first time anyone has ever beaten a record by Chambers. That should give you an idea just how good Chambers is at this game. <laughs> it's one of the shortest 100% runs in the game, but it still has a lot of cool highlights. For example, this Ogre grenade boost at the beginning is really tricky and he keeps a good amount of horizontal speed from it. This grenade shot around the corner off the wall is really cool. He does two really nice quad boosts in quick succession here. And he manages to land an intermission kill at the end, which is something I talked about in a previous video as well. Lastly, Elgu did what I think is the most impressive of his four demos, and that was the easy 100% marathon through the whole of episode 3. This is seven and a half minutes of non-stop action, and there's way too much stuff going on to cover in this video. But that's something that constantly amazes me about modern Quake speedrunning. The marathon demos through full episodes or through the full game have gotten to be almost as fast as the individual level runs. To get a marathon record now you have to utilize almost all of the riskiest strategies, play perfectly and have good luck as well. And this run is just a perfect example of that. So those were Elgu's runs, and that brings us to Chambers, the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> Ryan has just been absolutely crushing records left and right lately. And yeah, he just has a style of movement that looks next generation, even compared to other modern runners. I'm honestly not sure what exactly makes it that way. It's just a level of smoothness and precision that the game hasn't really seen before. There are a lot of runners who have put thousands of hours into this game, but somehow their basic movement just never quite looks like a Chambers run. And that's something that I personally just love about this game. We all have the same resources and basic controls available to us, but individual players become recognisable purely by their style. It's a little bit like the way musicians will sound completely different playing the exact same instrument. 
the fact that you can kind of have your own artistic style in Quake is probably my favorite thing about the game. But anyway, before I get lost in my wafty poetic ideas, let's talk about the runs. First, he improved the E4M2 Nightmare Run by one second. There was nothing radically new here, just a series of small optimizations. For example, he found a way to get a small boost from this Shambler. And he managed to get this ogre to fire its grenade a little faster by stunning it first with this nail. Chambers also did two long way easy runs on E2M1 and E3M2. Some Quake maps have simple skips which make their demos very short. Probably the most well known of these is on E2M1 where you can simply jump over this gap to the exit, even without using bunny hops. On E3M2, it's possible to boost over the trigger, which makes the key disappear, meaning that you can collect it at the beginning of the run and skip straight to the exit. Runs on these maps were very quickly optimized, and some of the records have stood for over 20 years. So SDA added an extra category for certain levels where the simple skips aren't allowed and players have to find other ways to save time. This just adds some extra challenges and creates cool runs on levels which would otherwise see very little play. Chambers managed to save a single second on both of these maps. Next up was the E4M8 easy run. Again, there was nothing brand new here, just in his own words, some cleaner movement and boosts. But just to note, it, it might not seem like a big deal when I go through these runs really quickly and talk about small optimizations. But the reality is that most of these records stood for years or sometimes decades before being beaten by a single second. The amount of detail that goes into optimizing these short quake runs is hard to overstate. There's probably enough material in each of these runs to talk about for a long time, but then this overview video would turn into a 10 part series, and I'm not sure anybody wants to watch that. But yeah, it's worth keeping in mind just how much work goes into tiny improvements at this level. Next up was the nightmare run of E2M3, and this time Chambers did invent something completely new. The current route on nightmare skill involves getting to the grenade launcher as fast as possible in order to boost up to the exit. The central part of the map has this kind of pillar with various button operated bridges extending to different areas. The previous record involved taking quite a long path through the map in order to grab the grenade launcher. But Chambers found an insane bunny sequence to jump straight to the grenade launcher and then back again. In the entire history of Quake speedrunning, no one had thought that you could bunny that far. <laughs> and it's a perfect example of Chambers' next-level movement skills. I tried for a little while just for fun, and I couldn't land that jump even a single time. This saved 11 seconds off the previous record. These kinds of improvements to the original id runs almost never happen anymore. But apparently that still wasn't enough, because a week later, Chambers found another massive skip on an id run, this time on E4M6, the Pain Maze. And this is my personal favorite of all the demos I've mentioned so far in this video. Not really because of the skill involved, but just because the strategy is so ridiculous. Like on E2M3, this map has a kind of central hub with ledges and bridges leading to the various parts of the map. The path to the exit is open here too, but it's out of reach without an explosive boost. So for the last 20 years, all the previous runs involve first getting the gold key to raise this elevator. 
grabbing the rocket launcher and then boosting to the exit area. That was too slow for Chambers though, so he tried to lure one of these exploding spawns out into the main area. The problem is that they don't move upwards enough to swim out of this small tunnel, so he had to rely on an incredibly rare and incredibly random bug in the game where these enemies occasionally clip through slopes or walls. It's the kind of thing that most people don't even consider attempting in a run because it's so luck dependent. But Chambers got the spawn clip and still had the reflexes to make this insane split second boost while the spawn bounced around at full speed. This led him straight to the exit area where he smashed the previous record by 14 seconds. So that's it for now. As you can see, it's been a wild couple of months for Quake so far. And keep in mind that these are just the runs that have been submitted on the original id maps. Quake mapping has also grown like crazy in the last couple of years, and speedrunners have been submitting countless demos on custom maps and episodes. Plenty of these runs have movement and tricks that are just as crazy as in the original id runs. But there's also a lot more potential for newer or more casual players to submit records without having to compete with the best players in the game. Justin Fleck, the main moderator of SDA, has been doing an incredible job keeping everything updated and uploading videos of all the runs onto the Quake Done Quick YouTube channel. I think that's another reason why the Quake scene seems to be experiencing a bit of a renaissance at the moment. Whatever the reason, it's a great time to be a Quake fan, and I can't wait to see what the rest of the year holds. Thanks for listening, and see you later.